हरि 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 हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स वी ऑल एवरीवन हैज टू डील विथ इमोशंस दैट वी डोंट लाइक समटाइम there are emotions that are quite pleasant and then there are emotions we don't like and there is resistance and it's it's always a stress when these emotions are there let's say jealousy what is jealousy <laughs> somebody is getting something and then i think i should get that and i would be happier if i had that instead of the other person <laughs> and that creates a very strange feeling in the body anger just irritation also all these emotions they invariably come and if we struggle with them they are getting big and they are creating a problem it's good to learn to be aware when the emotions come often we are only aware once they are already huge <laughs> but if we learn to be attentive if we learn to be alert in the present then we see the emotions coming when they are still little and then the habitual way of dealing with him, with them is to resist i don't want that or then justify my position pick it up and make it stronger and justify more and in both cases in both cases we are feeding energy into the, the emotion that it is getting bigger and bigger and becomes a problem but if we learn instead of that to see the emotion as it is coming and then instead of just resisting the fact that this emotion comes accept and just observe what is happening then we are not feeding our life force into the emotion and it's not getting bigger and bigger and actually we become aware even negative emotions they are not the problem they are simply becoming a problem because we struggle with them and instead of being capable of then pushing them away as we would like to <clears throat> we making them stronger and then we resist even more and push more and they keep become even stronger and out of a little situation may arise a problem if we see an emotion come even a negative emotion if we see jealousy come and we accept okay that emotion comes see what what it is doing actually we can smile about it it comes it's there a moment it goes it doesn't create a problem
and then even the weirdest emotions they actually they are enriching the experience that's what they are for human experience without emotion would be dry it's making the human experience more juicy to have emotions but then we have the emotions we like and when they are there we try to keep them and we can't <laughs> and that also can create a problem and with the, the emotions we don't like we don't want them we fight them and they be getting bigger and then again we have the problem but if we learn to see emotions for what they are they are just waves of energy consciousness combining with energy creating a wave it's coming it's there a moment we feel that energy flowing through the body and we let it go again and then no emotion is a problem as long as we are appearing in a human form the whole range of emotion is there and external situations will trigger emotions invariably we need not be afraid of them we don't have to become emotionless <laughs> anyhow we can't but we don't also have to struggle to get the emotionless let the emotions come if we keep them on their level where they belong they are not a problem but actually they are making the experience more rich if we learn to deal with the emotion in such a way then actually then we are not more afraid not more afraid what is going to happen not more afraid whether people are very happy about what we have been doing and saying not more afraid what is going <clears throat> where is the story going to develop to am i going to be successful or not is there maybe trouble waiting for me in the future because even if difficult situations come the difficulty really is the emotions that we are producing and of which we are afraid because we have not learned to deal with them wisely emotions are just ripples in consciousness let them come see what they are doing let them go so called positive emotions so called negative emotions if we deal with them like that then they are both okay and we don't have the resistance against them then it's just a play of life flowing <laughs> and then sometimes we are doing things and we think oh god what did i do i made a mistake and then there is regret why did i do so and then we are not aware that this regret is also an emotion that we are holding on to okay we can become clear this was not a wise decision what i did i could do in a much more harmonious much more beautiful way and get wiser for the experience no need of regretting all right was not so nice but it happened it's already passed but now i am again free and stronger and wiser for the experience now your lila just wrote to me can i say something about 
repeating mistakes is that a decision that we make i wouldn't say like that i mean if it becomes a decision then actually we are intentionally causing harm if we make a mistake that is hurting somebody and we do it again then we are intentionally causing harm and this is always destructive but we may decide not to make mistakes certain mistakes and after that the situation comes and we repeat them and then again we understand oh it was a mistake and decide again not to repeat that mistake and the situation comes and then we make the same mistake i wouldn't call that a decision it's more like the old habits of which we are not fully aware of they have their own power and push us to repeat things in the same way as we have been acting and often we become aware of it only after situation is there has has passed oh god i decided not to make that mistake but in spite of that the decision has over uh, the situation has overcome my alertness and i still repeated the mistake if then we become aware there is no point on beating ourselves up and say oh you are useless okay it happened again but we can that much the stronger make again that some kalpa again intent i want to be more alert that in case a similar situation comes along i don't want to repeat the same mistake this is about not deliberately making mistakes but if you ask me what is it if we deliberately repeat mistakes what is a mistake if we do something not very good very harmonious and we become aware it wasn't good it wasn't harmonious i wouldn't even call it a mistake then simply we have reacted acted in a unfavorable way and if you are clear about it and see okay i will be more careful and the next time i'm not going to repeat it i don't call this a mistake and even if we repeat mistakes without being aware and only become aware after it has happened it's still not really a mistake we just have to become more alert and accept okay that habit is there that destructive habit is there and i'm well advised to work on it i'm well advised to be alert that when the situation comes along that i'm not falling in the same trap but if we do something of which we are sure it's wrong and then we repeat it and we are sure it's wrong well you may call that a decision but somebody who does that is not clear about making the decision but is really overcome with a very dark aspect that wants to create pain a destructive aspect that nobody with real clarity decides i'm doing something of which i think it's a mistake and i'm repeating it it's self destructive and it's destructive for those around only a sick mind confused mind can decide like this willfully repeating mistakes because 
then we call it a mistake because it really hurts. It hurts ourselves, it hurts others, and hurting living beings unnecessarily is not natural. If we are very clear, something is not good, and we repeat it, it comes along, and we do it in spite of that, and are aware that we are doing yes, then it becomes a mistake. And repeat, repeating it again and again, there something is really wrong with the balance in the mind, because it is not natural. It is not natural to do something that creates pain, if we know it's creating pain. Some people intentionally create pain for themselves, for others. It's a sick state. It's a psychotic state. It's not natural. So you cannot in, a, in clarity decide I'm repeating mistakes. Why? Why should I do so? <laughs> Why should I be destructive? It's not natural. Okay, I hope I have answered your question, Leela. I leave now the subject. And I'm asking you, my friends, is there anyone who would like to come in? You are welcome to do so. Yeah, so thank you. Hello, Lila. Yeah. There you are. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm here. Um, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's very deep what you said, and actually, uh, even I would say a bit extreme when, when the person wrote it's somebody on Facebook who I correspond with he wrote me a long answer I, I'm not sure I can't remember now but you said something um, that like made me a bit wow <laughs> when you said that if people keep uh, repeating mistakes um Let's say we agree on what a mistake is, because it's. I find it's also a discussion. Um, it's psychotic, and it, then I can understand more why. Why did the, the person say say it's a um, decision? But I'm not so sure psychotic people, they make decisions and something in me just want to say, I don't know, do people really want to suffer so much and to cause so much suffering to other people? Are, are they so like blocked or I don't want to use the word psychotic that they would actually repeat and repeat and cause suffering. It's uh, <laughs> it's rather shocking, um, rather shocking to hear it like that. Maybe maybe I can even say that somehow I know it and aware of it. But now, when I hear it from you, it's very difficult. Of course, I said that for somebody who is somewhat aware, who is aware, I'm doing something deliberately and I know it's something wrong and I'm doing it again. This is psychotic. Now, many people may do very bad things and they are so disconnected from their essence, from the light, that they even may think this is the right thing, that it's, a, it's their duty. They have to do it. They are maybe being ordered to do it 
and then they feel uh, yes, it's, it's not a mistake. It's fully right to do so. And of course, it's also a sick state, but they are not quite uh, aware, but they must still, somebody must be very disconnected consciously from their being in order to be capable of continuing doing that. Yeah, that helps because I won't go into the whole story, but just before this meeting specifically, I had a talk with my sister who is who does have problems and I made peace with her recently, but she seems to now going through a process not so great. And uh, I'm happy for what you said because then it's easier for me to to deal to yeah. not see her psychotic, but see her as, you know, not aware and what you just said, it's just easier for me to, to accept it. Yeah. Right. Uh, as I said, uh, when I before talked about uh, mistakes, repeating mistakes, many people read me repeat mistakes and only after the deed they think oh my god it was a mistake again and they don't do it deliberately then it's not yeah. the same psychotic state like somebody who willfully is repeating a mistake yeah. another person yeah. is just not very aware not very conscious and then uh, but even if they think I don't want to do it and the situation comes they forget and repeat the same mistake but that's not the same category like somebody who is fully aware, okay, this is wrong and I'm doing it again and somehow uh, are okay with it. That is really a sick state. Yeah, okay, then uh, that's clear. <laughs> no. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, shall we leave it? Are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you? Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to come in? You're welcome. Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. Yeah, I have, uh, you, you talked about mistakes and I see that I uh, again uh, come to this um, situation in myself when I, uh, when I afraid don't to, um, how to say, uh, don't to satisfy someone's uh, expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, so I f again uh, have this fear in myself to be bad, to be greedy, to be I don't know what. And this situation is not uh, big enough. It's not something important, but mm -hmm. it seems to me so big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and right. then, yes, it's like I I don't know. Sometimes some emotions come and. Uh, they stay and they go but some emotions i feel in myself like they are um, suppressed in me some some energy maybe it uh, like it happened something or some situation happened in my life and i didn't live through them didn't uh, live them correctly and some energy like suppressed inside of me mm -hmm. and sometimes it come up and I it's really very difficult to let go and I sometimes uh, even uh, remember some um, situations so uh, that happened before and even I see my parents faces sometimes I <laughs> I feel some connection with them, yes, and 
some depressive mood and so on yeah i i feel and i feel this tension in my body i talked to you about it and now i sit and meditate it and uh, try to, to relax and i don't know maybe something happens it seems to me i hope mm. <laughs> but it is yes really hard really hard yeah right Okay, there are emotions, they come and go, and they are not so difficult to deal with. But then uh, sometimes we have, as you say, suppressed a lot of stuff that we are carrying around, and we are not quite aware that it is there. And then when you really become quieter, when you become more conscious, actually, we often may be totally surprised how strong then suddenly emotions come. As long as people are half asleep, then the emotions slowly build up. But the more you are alert, when something comes, it may come boom, like this. And, and uh, then one may be shocked and think, hey, my God, uh, uh, I'm working to be peaceful. And then, boom, so out of the blue, a strong emotion comes like this, overwhelming. This is, a, this is basically not a bad sign. It simply means that there is more silence. And then when something comes, boom, then it's uh, very manifesting very strong. And if you just can deal with the emotion, just see what it is doing in the body and relax it and in that way let it go, then wonderful. But if it's connected to an event or a series of repeated events and it doesn't let go so easily, then you may also surrender to the fact, okay, this is too strong. I have to give it a bit of attention and then consciously open up and let the memories come but then try not to get caught up completely in the past, but be aware now, what is happening now? What is it doing to my experience now when these memories come, when these emotions come? How does it feel physically? And, and go through the story and be as detached and observative as you can and relax and relax and so the old power that is locked into the situation so starts to dissipate and if you do that for a while it it may happen that okay it goes away and you feel ah that one is gone <laughs> good good work it's finished but it may not be finished the next day similar stuff the same story may come back and overwhelm you. If you can just let it go, let it go. But if it is still too strong, you can accept, all right, instead of being now in my silent meditation, I just accept I'm consciously opening up that the memories can come, but very consciously stay here as good as I can, not get lost in the past, but stay here and see again what does it do to me right now what is the physical what is the energetic reaction to these memories and emotions that come up and again relax as good as you can and in that way old stuff is getting weaker and weaker and eventually it le it's not more a problem. Eventually, it's just, just a story that has no more power over you. Emotions that are produced just now are relatively easy to deal with, but the emotions that hang on to a whole red tail of similar events in the past, they may not be so easy to deal with, but if we patiently instead of fighting them, instead of suppressing them, accept, okay, they are there and observe. Observe what they are doing. Observe their action right now in my psychophysical manifestation and relax as good as we can. Then the power they had 
to push us around is getting less and less and finally they are losing their power and they are then just emotions that come and go on the level where they belong. <laughs> Thank you, Werner. Some days ago, it seemed to me that uh, this really uh, began to lose its power. It's like, uh, I don't know how, it looks like there is a being inside me with these uh, low emotions, with this so, so, suppressed emotions like yes like like this is a being and it seemed to me that it um, lost its power little by little but today it again very strong and really I, I today I, I asked God and asked him please give me this damn calmness I'm tired of already of this <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Really, tired of these emotions, of these uh, feelings. But I really go on, yes, go on watching. Yeah, yeah. You don't think something is wrong when this is happening. Then you can just accept, okay, uh, I did some work and it left me alone, but now it comes back and is still strong. So then you just surrender to the fact that it is so. And uh, you deal with it again patiently as it comes up. And even if you are not quite aware, each time you deal with such things like that, it's getting less powerful. You are getting stronger in the co process and the old habit that pushes these reactions is getting less powerful. It has gotten so strong because unconsciously we have been repeating similar things over and over and over, similar mental states over and over, similar emotions and holding on to over and over and over and gradually it becomes so strong. And if every time it comes and we treat it like that, that instead of unconsciously being pushed around by them, we consciously see what's going on, and learn to relax as good as we can. <laughs> then it's losing its power gradually, and finally it's really done. It it loses its power. It's it's then just memories and stories. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I go on. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Courageously, patiently. <laughs> okay, thank you. Ario. 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 I see. Guy is coming in. Hello, Guy. Hi. Yes, I'm in. Hello. Hello. Uh, I have a um like a topic. I I would like to hear your perspective about yes. <clears throat> and somehow it's related maybe to the last two questions um i've been uh, in the last few weeks i'm reading this book this uh, it's a book uh, it's called the creation book it's a jewish uh, one of the most ancient uh, books mm -hmm. in hebrew it's called yetzirah it's like uh, from the kabbalah but maybe the first book yeah and the uh, Somehow I bumped, I heard about it and I'm reading it now. Apparently it's really a, an advaitic book. Yeah. Because it talks about the creation, how the world was created. I won't go into the details, but it starts from the origin that it was built from these powers that are nothing or, or you cannot touch them, you cannot speak about them. Yeah. Um. And uh, as I'm I'm listening I'm reading the book and listening to some talks and uh, and doing some practice with the sounds because it talks about the letters the Hebrew letters and uh, and somehow I started to receive this kind of meditation using sounds which I was doing before but now using specific sounds and I started to feel I'm starting to feel this uh, power like uh, coming in you you might say yeah. So my question is, because uh, I usually 
most of the time in, in when I was practicing, for example, self-inquiry, I would find this, uh, reach this emptiness, this, you know, this awareness or uh, something very pure, empty, uh, quiet, which also you cannot say anything about it really. Everything mm -hmm. appears in it. Yeah. But this emptiness uh, sometimes would feel very fragile to the powers of the world, you could say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For example, uh, two nights ago, I went to some uh, music uh, show. A woman next to me, I heard her speaking with her friends and she said uh, she has a terrible headache. And I, I was feeling her headache. Yeah. And uh, it, it was just, you know, I'm in, in the same space and it's somehow, it's like being like a sponge. Yeah. Everything comes in. And this can be things from the past, from our ancestors, parents, from neighbors or people we bump into. And now this this new power that I feel, I have a feeling that if, if I continue, uh, it will create, it feels already like it's creating like some kind of a inner power that can somehow balance that not everything can come into this uh, space. Right, right. Can you talk about this or is there any, I don't know, in Hinduism or Advaita, any reference to this? Well, let's not talk about any other theories, but simply about what I, what is. <laughs> <laughs> this can happen when what you described, when you get uh, in that relatively peaceful state, one may, may start to feel more and more vulnerable. It is possible that you continue just on that line without dealing with energy, that you just become more, in a way, stronger in that peaceful state simply by relaxing in it. The, the tendency is we have a relatively peaceful state, but then there is also that still the personality there and feels really good with it and wants to protect it, wants to keep it. And then uh, as soon as we want to protect it and keep it, then we create walls that are very vulnerable, bang, anything that comes hits against it. But if you are in that peaceful state and you learn to relax, you become more and more transparent and things are just, you still feel them but they simply going through and uh, they leave no trace if you are really transparent. Now, there is that approach more with energy. And yes, if you feel that uh, your practices, they help to build up a certain energy, then that also helps to deal easier with all the influences around. Eventually, if you go with both, both practice deeper, then they actually merge. They are not two things. It's not that it's either peace or it's energy. It may look quite some, as something different when we focus on it, starting from where we catch the attention on the mental level then uh, going into silence or going into energy looks quite different. But if you go deeper, then you become aware that really the more you dive into energy, the more you go into that peaceful state. The more you go into that peaceful state, if you really dive in deeper, the more that naturally the energy is simply bubbling up. Uh, they come together. They are coming out of the same ground. You may remember I have heard repeatedly said the first expression of that mystery of existence has three aspects and it's consciousness and it's energy and it's love. And you can focus on any one of them, but if you really go deep, then the other two gradually will join. 
And now that you have found that something that pulls you, uh, that comes naturally, that you do another kind of practice, then you can very well do both practices, that you focus more on that peaceful state uh, with your habitual practice and that you focus more on energy with your more Kabbalistic practice that you are doing now. And you, I know a person who then kept on holding on to a difference between the two and it made him more and more restless and crazy than uh, now I'm again in a, in, a, in a Advaita phase and now I'm again in a Shakti phase <laughs> and it created a mental problem while well, there is no problem, there is no contradiction and you can, if you have those two aspects you are open to, you can also spontaneously focus more on one or the other but uh, be aware that you don't create in the mind these are two different things and then it doesn't create the problem and gradually you become more and more peaceful simultaneously as you feel more and more that there is an energy that is there that helps you to deal with those onslaught that come from all the side without not that the, the, you need the energy to create stronger walls but the energy is so naturally there that you have the courage to simply relax and let go and then whatever comes can touch you less and less yeah i even today i think i i, I in the meditation i i think i realized that that even what I spoke about in the beginning, this space, this emptiness, awareness, yeah. it's still not, uh, it's not that that is behind me. Like, so they are both kind of expressions, right? emptiness and this power, but somehow it feels like good to nourish this power a little bit. Yes, sure, sure. Even the stout Advaiti Nisargadatta Maharaj, actually he talked a lot, especially towards the end of his life, in his last period he took, talked a lot about energy to the surprise of many of his followers because he has been talking about consciousness, 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 but there he kept on telling people somehow you have to make friends with the Shakti, somehow you have to get in tune with the energy also. These are the two aspects that somehow have to come together. And along with that also the love. Then the heart has to open up. If that is not happening, it's still, still rather superficial. <laughs> is this like the, what he says, he calls pra Prakriti and Shushumna, something like this? Prakriti is the nature, and Shushumna actually is a, a word from the Kundalini Yoga. It's the, the, the channel where the Kundalini is supposed to rise. <laughs> I don't know whether he was talking about Shushumna, but he was more and more talking about prana. That uh, also somehow you have to include that. And obviously you have found a way to do so. And now it seems like two, two different things, but uh, you go on practicing that and don't fall into the trap of creating a wall between them and think it's two different things and then more and more they flow together. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I feel that. Okay. Wish you well. Very <laughs> very <laughs> 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 Uh, Werner, is this how I come in? Yes. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. I uh, can you see me? Am I in now? Yes, I can see you and I can hear you. Okay. I, I met you twenty years ago in India. If, if I look familiar, I'll be amazed because it was twenty years ago. But twenty um, years. But here in Tiruvannamalai. 
Yes, yeah. I came to your thought song all through 2004. And, yeah, um, but I, met I see. Yeah. Um, I, I am really, uh, I'm really upset by things that are going on in the world. And um, maybe I get too upset because I, I almost have this neurotic idea that so many people are not seeing the baby stepping that is happening. I'm in America. And um, so I almost feel like I've got to, um, like, see it for them. Like, you know, but, but then it's so hard to bear. Um, mm. I almost feel like um, maybe I should put my head in the sand for my peace of mind. Mm. But it, this has got me thinking, you know, I, I really don't want to be reincarnated if possible. And especially with the things <laughs> going on in the world, I really don't want to come back. <laughs> and, and so could, I've been thinking, um, can you help me? Like, I'm in. I'm in perfect health. I'm the same age as you and I'm in perfect health, but I know that someday death will come. Can you help me um, think, tell me some things I should keep in mind? I'd like to practice them. I, I don't want to be caught offhand and then be tricked into coming back. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with what you started. You see so many terrible things happening in the world and you are upset and you have all the reason to be upset about what is happening in the world. But you can also at the same time be aware there is that aspect in you that is absolutely not affected by anything that is happening. And more and more bring the attention back to that. And then, of course, it is upsetting seeing how people are absolutely not aware how they are being treated and how they are mistreated and what the direction it takes. But then if people come to you and want to talk, you can talk to them, but you cannot go out and force people to listen to you because uh, immediately there is a wall and if you persist, there comes only aggression and destruction back. So you have to surrender to the fact that humanity has to go through what it is going through. It's a, it's a time of transition and it looks very bad. It looks the direction it takes, it looks very bad and it may also get worse, but it's not just going to end up like some powers would like, like it to end up. It's, it's at the same time, there is a very constructive, powerful, lightful force getting stronger and stronger. And eventually all these dark forces that uh, try to take total control will come crumbling down. And humanity has just to go through that. And the, the people around you, if they want to listen to you, then you can tell them. But if they don't want to listen to, to you, then accept that they are somehow hypnotized because whole humanity is hypnotized. Uh, doesn't, yes. do, doesn't want to see what's going on. And then they, they say, no, no, leave me in peace. Uh, I want to be, I, it's after all, it's getting normal again. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Not for long, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes. Oh, well. you. But you can be aware that nobody suffers in vain. Everybody who has come to this world and goes through what they are going through, even if it's painful, it harnesses something very precious and they're getting richer out of this life for that. And that same being who goes through that suffering at a certain point will consciously start to reap the fruit of all that has happened. So still, suffering is not necessary. But as long as people don't want to see, then suffering is inevitable. And you can accept that it is as it is, that there is in you and there is in them an aspect that is ever pure in an innocent purity, this time, that cannot be touched by all that. 
and this is temporary. One goes through, and as long as people don't want to see, as long as people want to be half asleep, invariably, it's a very painful business. And you don't have to make your story more painful because you see that. And you think I should do something about this, I should tell them, I should show them, I should make them, <laughs> shake them up and right. make them up. <laughs> I know. Right. Yeah. It doesn't work. So you can accept this is what is happening and it seems humanity has to go through. But you still can connect with that aspect in you that is not affected by Right. It's becoming then still also a me, me personal thing that I want, I want to change it, I want to change it, I want to change it. I really have that. I really have that. And it's, uh, it's not a good feeling and it's, it, it's not the inner peace that I would like to foster. And actually, the more you do that, the more you connect with that unmovable aspect yourself, uh, the more you connect with the lightful aspect of yourself, the more you contributing that something can change. Not by trying to change people, not by trying to shake them up, but by becoming stronger and stronger, then you become like a lighthouse. You are at ease and at peace and something beautiful flows through you and radiates and others are benefiting and also inspired to maybe open up a little easier. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Now, um, and, and the, yeah. now, uh, now about uh, getting born again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about that. You know, this whole reincarnation business is also still a theory trying to talk about something that cannot really be talked out and spelled out exactly like this. You are even now not really incarnated. Your being is timeless, spaceless. And only an aspect of your being, that timeless, spaceless divine being is projected into this time-space continuum. And somehow uh, a momentary appearance of a being is there, the personality. But actually, that's not what we are. That's just the role that we are playing. And then, when that role is over, when the life is over, that energy, that consciousness is withdrawn into your being, timeless, spaceless, and this person is not reincarnating. That being may decide to project again, but all these stories about this helpless compulsion of being born again and again and again and thousands of times till finally we somehow escape that circle, you, <laughs> need, you need not take it so serious. It's, it's a metaphor about something that, that is happening that cannot really be put in words. What we can do during our lifetime, and you mentioned that you are same age as me, so maybe we don't have that much of time anymore. <laughs> right. 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 So, learn just to be in the present. And then when you see that you are hanging on to the past emotionally, then instead of encouraging that, see what it is doing, see that it's somehow sucking the life force out of you and giving the past a reality it doesn't deserve. And bring the attention back and see what it is doing to you now and relax. And in that sense, then you'll learn more and more to die every moment. Let the past go and you are always new and fresh for the new moment. And the more you live like this, the less the question of birth and death and re and previous lives and reincarnation will come. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Hariyom. You're most welcome. Hariyom. Hariyom. <laughs> Um, I'm asking usually the people who are not talking to also turn off the, the, not the microphone, the camera, because it's taking information and my information is, you like uh, down in the, in the corner, in the left corner, you see the picture of a camera. If you tip on it, then the camera will turn off. Right, it's off. <laughs> At the end, we will come in all that want for a moment. But since my connection sometimes is weak, it's better that the cameras are off, then it's taking less information. <laughs> all right. Is there anybody else who would like to come? Uh, hello, Andreas. Yeah. <laughs> um question about meditation yes is like a centering and relax meant to foster a state with a kind of openness to the experience like like when you ask yourself who am i that's like a, a question that opens you up right you, you just listen or watch or whatever what is there without a preoccupied answer and mind and sometimes when i when i i came through buddhist meditation and sometimes when i i had the, the idea that i have to focus very much on the meditation object and this kind of like closes me down to something which yeah narrows me in a way and right now i have the the idea that i have to more uh, open up in a way that to, to just be open and see what happens without a fixed idea about it. Right. Can you say something? Right. Uh, you asked whether the centering and relaxing is opening up, and yes, it does. And even if you do this kind of meditation technique where you are focusing on an object, that uh, doesn't mean your consciousness has to become smaller and smaller and smaller. You can just be focused on that object, but if in the focus, instead of uh, concentrating like with a lot of tension, uh, grinding your teeth and concentrating. But if you learn to focus and be single pointed to that one ID or whatever the object of focus is, and at the same time, then learn to center and relax, then you still have the focus, but then your experience becomes expansive. You, you don't uh, become smaller because of the focus. Then there is just a center and you can be as expansive about it as you can. <laughs> That's still difficult for me because I usually use the, the breath as a means of meditation. Yeah. And But if I... It it's just seems that I try to, to too hard if I yeah, there's too much like willpower or, yeah, I would just become narrow if I take it too serious. I lose yeah. the, I lose the sense of ease and lightness in a way. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that you said you can very much focus on this, on one point and still be very open, but I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> <laughs> If you consciously, while focusing, consciously relax, you will get it easier. And you, you start on the easiest level to relax. You focus and then at the same time, relax your legs. Relax your feet. You still focus and you relax. And then when the body relaxes, you relax more energetically and when you physically and energetically relax that mental intellectual tension also disappears and you still can focus the tendency is that if we with willpower concentrate that we get all tense about it and so then it's it's something one has to learn if we meditate like this with concentration 
that in the concentration, we learn to relax instead of using so much raw willpower. Yeah, sometimes like a light in my mind, and then I focus on the light and yeah. uh, still watch the breath a little bit. And uh, like usually, I, f I feel like oh, okay, everything is going well. Then and then I'm I'm not getting so uptight so easily. And uh, I focus if I focus more on the light, then it's not. Yeah, it doesn't make me so narrow. Yes, okay. If that happens and uh, you are feeling okay. Just don't sort of settle in and think, yes, okay, that's it. Just keep that alertness, that openness. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. combine it with the breath. No, no, no problem combining uh, being aware of the breath and seeing the light. Yeah, it's like my yeah, it's my my mind is like switching on and off in between the two. And then you add on top of that, relax. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask another question? Sure. About the projection, is the projection? every moment like every moment of consciousness is produced by the pro projection you you mean that the that human experience that projection that is appearing in this time space whether this is every moment it, yeah it's more like it's burst but then uh, we somehow in the mind continue a smooth uh, create a continuation uh, the feeling of a continuation like a little bit like the old type of film not the digital when when the film passes in front of the light actually it's fixed pictures chuck 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 but then somehow in our brain we see a continuity <laughs> And uh, it's a bit a similar thing with that projection in this world. <laughs> and actually, every time you're really relaxing, you're not somehow in, st in strains, in pains, in struggles. Somebody does something they are really liking and feel the joy of it, then through the projection there shines that joyousness of your being, of you, of what you are. We, we are not condemned to stay locked in that projection all the time. It's just something like one channel that comes into this magic show and through that channel we connect with the whole rest of the magic show. And then somehow instead of being aware that we are connecting, that being is connecting through that channel, somehow we got caught up being that channel. I'm, <laughs> I'm this person. <laughs> And the projection is there, that the consciousness, life, love is projected into this magic show. But then that identification with the role, with the person that comes and goes and comes and goes, but we are creating in the memory a continuity. And it seems to be so real until we really seriously question it and observe it and then become aware, oh, this is just a possibility to appear as a person into this game, but actually I'm prior to that. And then the person springs into existence where the game asks for it, 
but you are aware you're playing a person. You are not that person. <laughs> and then that person comes and goes and comes and goes, but you are. <laughs> So, so the identification with the body and mind and feelings has to be produced in every one of these bursts? Not really an identification is necessary. You can just be aware, okay, there is this body, but this body is just an expression of myself. There is no need of identifying and think I am this body and limit consciousness to that. There's no need of thinking I am this mind. This mind doesn't even exist if I'm not thinking. It's just a continuous flow of thought built up on prana that is the mind. <laughs> if you stop thinking, there is no such a thing like a mind to identify with. <laughs> There's just consciousness. <laughs> But normally, like this, this bursting process is like tainted with this ident identification with this body and mind. Right. The, the once that identification is there, then somehow the consciousness is locking to that to that game that me, 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 I, me, mine. And once it's in place, and if we are not questioning it, if you are not starting to bring your attention back and observe, then that just goes on mindlessly, unconsciously, day in and day out. I, me, me, mine. <laughs> so meditation is a means of just like becoming aware of what's really going on. That's the point of meditation. It's not that we have to meditate and build up reality. It's not the, the point of meditation that even if we meditate, we accumulate enough good points that finally we get the reward. It's not the point of meditation that we struggle and struggle to reach something that is far away from us. The point of meditation is to become aware here, now, and see what's going on and then learn not to do all those things that prevent us from being in our natural state. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I have to digest that. You are welcome. <laughs> okay. Hurry home. Hurry home. Some Hi, Hi Werner. Hello, Rolly. Hello. Long time ago, I had no questions so far. Yeah, you're, that's good. <laughs> <clears throat> that's good, yes. <laughs> But now uh, there is a question who come up um, because uh, I read a book uh, lately from Stephen Hawking. Maybe you know this name. He was yes, a yes. scientist in, in, uh, in astrophysics. Yes. And I'm still quite interested in those things. Yes. Um, and you also talk often about the timelessness. Yes, and um, he also wrote about the theory of the Big Bang. Yes, and that's quite a long time ago. And and when it's quite, it was really quite interesting for me. Many aspects he wrote, and there he also wrote before the Big Bang there was there was no time. Yeah, there was the time began with the Big Bang. Yeah. in this space space um, time continuum right now it's really difficult for me to understand the timelessness can you talk a little bit about that right <laughs> hawkins desperately tried to come closer and closer by uh, figuring mathematically out what happened in the first fraction of a second in the big bang <laughs> And doing exactly what you are doing now, hoping to understand what is prior to that. And even a giant mind like Stephen Hawking can not understand what is timelessness. He can come close 
do a diminution in the direction and then he, I mean his medic, medical proofs <laughs> they go way beyond my <laughs> medical understanding but it is simply not possible to understand for that which is prior to time to space is it's also now it was not there prior to space and time. It's that which makes the experience possible now. It's that which makes us capable of talking with, with each other now. It's timeless now. That timelessness of the present, which is prior to the Big Bang or any expression, is, is timeless. So it's now, it's in the future, it's in the past, it's timeless. And we cannot possibly, with our intellect, grasp that and come to the point where I can say, now I understood it. As long as we are understanding, the English word is actually perfect for that. As mm, long yes. as we are understanding, we are standing under. But if you come to the center of it, then you can also not say that you don't know that. Actually, you know that best, for you are that. That sense that you are touching when you say, I. There is something so totally, totally, intimately familiar, immediately. If you, I start to think about it, I'm like this, I'm like that, I'm, I'm getting in a story. But prior to that, there is that sense. And that sense of being alive, of knowing not by understanding, by being, is there, is there all the time. Even if you overlook it most of the time, even if you are not aware of it, it's still there all the time. And that timelessness, Hawkins can never, and minds like Hawkins can never comprehend with the mind however subtle they get, however uh, the trillions and the billions, <laughs> the quadrillions fraction of a second, uh, he's explaining what happened in the Big Bang then and whether it is so or not, I cannot say. But anyhow, he desperately tried to get closer and closer and closer with intellectual understanding to that which is prior and it's simply a gap that cannot be bridged by the intellect, for the intellect comes only after the creation is there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. Um, I really can also feel that what you what you told just now with the with the feeling of I really can feel this timelessness, but uh, I really cannot understand it. No, and you can't. Actually, we, I should <laughs> give up. <laughs> I think I should give up. Um, well, and, and also you talked before about the three aspects of, of, of everything that is love, energy, and consciousness. Yes. And actually, he talks about the same, except the love. Mm -hmm. But he also talks about there is no God. Yeah. Or, or he, he doesn't know. Um, and, and also he doesn't know how, what, what con consciousness is. Right. So that is also a big question for him. Yes. Right. Now, and, and also, uh, yes. Uh, he's not talking about love. And of course, it depends what one means, means with love, because different things are being called love. And there is the emotion love. And I'm not meaning the emotion love when I yes. say that. And I that, know. of course, is not in the, on the level of, of Hawking's searching. But he is not aware that apart from consciousness and the energy, there is that, that something that connects everything, that everything is connected, which is 
which is connected with consciousness and energy and yet has its unique flavor as much as consciousness and energy has its unique flavor. And because I don't know a better word, I call it love. <laughs> I see. Or God. Or <laughs> he talks also about the na nature elements and if if the Big Bang really um, was like they think it was, it, it's coming out from from nothing, and he, he said you can call this nothing also God, mm -hmm. because it comes out of his self or whatever. Right. And and another topic in in this in this book was also or what what makes me thinking about their life life began on Earth about three or four billions years ago. And there was a long time, just small, um, how we say in English? Um, Einzeller. Ah, yes, Amoebas uh, and like uh, just one Microbes. cell, one cell beings. Eh? <laughs> one cell beings, as they well, exactly. Well, I guess that's and not a <laughs> professional expression. No, <laughs> we, we know what we're talking about, <laughs> yes. I think. and. That was such a long period and the human, and you often talk about we have a, a great possibility because we are humans. Yes. But the, they are such a short time on earth. Mm. And also for me, it's, it's quite difficult. For, for example, 100 years ago, we were 1 billion humans on earth and now we are more than eight. Mm -hmm. where, where does... Where do all these souls come from? <laughs> uh, do you see what I mean? Yes, yes. It is for me not to, yeah. to grasp. Just uh, about the other aspect, about uh, all the evolution. I'm not more believing so much into the scientific story about the evolution of life, <laughs> as they are telling it. But never mind. <laughs> and why that? Uh, because I don't think this is a historical fact. There is an intelligence at work that is projecting this out of this timelessness, and uh, along with it, out of that out of that present, is flowing the past and the future. And this is all not as solidly real as one thinks it is. So the whole evolutionary story they are telling is also trying to explain something that they cannot really explain. And then they come up with that whole development in this way, which partly has aspects of it, but I'm sure there have been lots of influences there that uh, are not scientifically taken into account and even known. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you asked about uh, what, what did about, you ask? uh, how, how many oh, those uh, souls, uh, where do they so come many from souls, and why right. do they? In, in just 100 years, you see what I, I wanted to say is there were three or four billion years, no humanity, and then just in a short time, so many more. Mm. But, you know, this creation, there are infinitudes of infinitudes. We, we just know our petty little world here. <laughs> <laughs> which is a speck of a speck of dust even in our known universe <clears throat> and there are other levels where there are manifestations that we, we cannot see with our present technology that are too subtle and there are other universes and there is no limit, there is an infinity of manifestations and there are 
infinite and infinite numbers of centers of perceptions of what you call souls. So if there are, uh, is there, if there is a bit more of an echo, uh, agglomeration of souls at some time and some place, that is not surprising. There are infinite numbers of beings that uh, that could somehow quickly come to Earth in between. <laughs> okay. But we could also say it's just the fact of uh, the evolution which just made it possible to make more people. And, and not because of the souls or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, like, um, like there are uh, ants who, who um, how you say, get more and more or whatever, another other animal. Right, as long as you think of consciousness in a scientific, traditional scientific way that uh, it's somehow a byproduct of the evolution, <laughs> then you can say so. But if you come from the other side that there is first consciousness and then out of that the creation is appearing, then somehow uh, you cannot say so. <laughs> then the mm -hmm. consciousness is first. And the, in that consciousness, there are infinite numbers, infinite centers of perception, all one, all connected. There is not that separation. And yet each center is something unique and beautiful in that infinite one Ness. And if creation is just an expression of that, then the scientific explanation of this is the question of evolution doesn't quite fit anymore. <laughs> yes, good good point of view with the with the thought or the the feeling of the that the consciousness was first. Yeah. Mm. That's what, what and, I meant before when I said there are these three aspects. There is that something that is even prior to that pure consciousness, which can not even remotely can be said something about it. And even pure consciousness or pure energy or pure love are already an expression of that. They are the first expression. There is, this is the ground, and out of this ground, this whole expressions of manifestation sprout. All we can, with our conscious effort, is direct the attention back to that ground. And even the ground, we can not really understand. We cannot understand pure consciousness, but it's still, we can have a notion of pure consciousness, pure energy, and have the direction. But that which is, which you are, is even prior to that. And there's absolutely nothing to say about that. <laughs> yes, I, I see. Um, actually, I would like to go very directly to this. <laughs> Not, uh, how, can I, how can I tell you? Um, We try to we try to, to 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 grasp this feeling or this uh, state of being or consciousness through meditation through many many exercises and um, is there is there another way to go there? They're not a shortcut that we can. I, just... I need a shortcut. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in reality, we don't need a shortcut because you are never away from that. You are that, even now. It's just a momentary cloud that obscures the consciousness that makes us feel that we are not that. But the consciousness then caught up in this game has no... That's the 
the one thing we cannot avoid, that we somehow bring the attention back to that first expression. That somehow that job we cannot avoid. That we come back more through consciousness or more through energy or more through love to that first expression, to pure consciousness, love, energy. That much we have to do, but that's all we can do. And then you are just there, open, available, that something happens from beyond that. But this is the game of this manifestation. And when we are in it, then we may resist and think why I have to make all these efforts and why I have to go through all this. But actually, you knew that very well before you started. And there you were okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, okay. <laughs> but we can go about it playful. We can learn not to take it so serious. And then it doesn't look like a heavy burden that we are carrying. I'm trying that. It, it's it's going uh, quite better than in the past yeah. to go playfully with all that. Yeah. Maybe I, sh I shouldn't read books from Hawking or other things like it, but it's still interesting. <laughs> but Nothing then it wrong. comes up, some, some question come up with it. Nothing wrong. I mean, he's a great spirit, Hawkins, with a tremendous intellect and uh, somebody who is sincere about what he's doing is is inspiring. Simply don't get uh, don't get stuck with the scientific limitations. It can inspire to be sincere and open up and go even beyond that. <laughs> Yes, it's just fascinating and um, inspiring. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So we okay. <laughs> yes. Adio. Thank you. You're welcome. Adio. 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 <clears throat>